today I had a conversation with folks on my live stream this morning and I think I need to make a video about it. Folks who have been following for a while uh, have heard me talk about the history of Indian boarding schools in the United States. The history is dark and TikTok generally does not share it with folks, which is why I created a newsletter so I could send updates that I find directly to your email. But in the off chance that TikTok actually lets this video out, here's some things you need to know. Here in the United States, there are a handful of Indian boarding schools that never closed. There's three that I have talked about a lot. One is Chemawa, located in Oregon. I have a video pinned to the top of my profile uh, talking about how they failed an audit this year. They receive federal funding and um, there's, there's problems there. There's also St. Labre who this year launched an investigation into potential unmarked graves. So conditions at these schools are reportedly better than they were in the past, but colonization still occurs. St. Joseph's Indian School, I have talked about the most. They are located in South Dakota. Everything I'm pulling here is from Wiki. You can go check it yourself. Um, there was a little bit of an argument in the Wiki edit section. I took a little peeky peek. Someone is mad. Uh, apparently, according to them, the article is not neutral enough for them. Um, they have problems with uh, the history of abuse and the financial allegations, which I will be getting into. So St. Joseph's is still in operation as of today. In 2009 to 2010, nearly a dozen former students sued the Sacred Heart Institute and the Diocese of Sioux Falls for alleged sexual abuse by priests at the school. So the Diocese of South Dakota has no authority over the school or the institute, so they got excluded. The article does talk about some of the experiences that some of the former students um, were subjected to. For context, these former students are adults now, but that doesn't make their trauma any less valid. So back to the lawsuit, even with the diocese excluded, the lawsuit moved forward in 2010. That same year, 2010, South Dakota legislature passed HB 1104, an amendment to its childhood sexual abuse bill that barred anyone 40 or older from recovering damages from anyone but the actual perpetrator of sexual abuse. Now that last line is key because one of the alleged abuser priests had since died before the lawsuit got brought forward. The bill was even created by Stephen Smith, an attorney for St. Joseph's, representing them against similar abuse allegations. Representative Steve Hickey. So Representative Steve Hickey of District 9 said, I consider how this went down to be scandalous and shameful. Who are we kidding? The fact greatly reinforces a church cover-up of abuses seen here and documented extensively elsewhere. So St. Joseph's not only has a history of abuse, they have also used their connections and influence to create legislation in order to shield them from being held accountable for that abuse. I am not done. Have you ever received a packet filled with like dream catchers and postcards and please give us money brochures from St. Joseph's Indian School. Yes, this is, this is part of a financial scandal that that school has been involved with for years. They've been called out on it multiple times um, and they still keep doing it. This article is from 2014. They were fabricating stories of indigenous children to guilt people into sending them donations. Millions, millions they have raised this way. Wikipedia has a whole section on it. It's been going on for years. These letters not only are misleading and manipulative and responsible for essentially conning money out of people, they also perpetuate incredibly harmful stereotypes. I'm, I'm just, is so bad. They also seem to be targeting primarily the elderly and religious with this tactic. When you Google St. Joseph's Indian School, South Dakota, you get a bunch of obituaries of white people. It's actually kind of startling. 
because down at the bottom they they ask for donations to be sent to the school there are so many stories of people online figuring this out you can also check out the damage on charity watch so yeah yeah for everyone who would like to keep digging and look deeper i have more resources in the in the place my link page has a whole tab everything's arranged anyways there will probably be only two people that see this video because tiktok likes to hide it so that's all